eventually you are going to want to learn how to be higher social status. Remember, higher social status pretty much means that they want to be your friend more than you want to be theirs. And therefore, they're going to do a lot of things for you, such as care about your problems. This is their way of making sure you won't leave them. Now, there's many, many, many ways to become higher social status and talk about a lot of them in my book Stop Suicidal Suffering and the bonus ebook How to Make Friends. But unfortunately, it's too long of a conversation, it's too in depth to go into right now. But I am going to give you one powerful technique that works immediately and will really help you out in the short term as you go on to the longer path of becoming higher social status. It's called emotional impact. This is a term I coined to express how some ways of communicating evoke your emotions more than other ways. So they impact your emotions more. Remember, everyone pretty much does what their emotions tell them to pretty much all of the time. So if you speak in a way that emotionally makes them want to understand you, it's a lot more effective than if you just say, hey, I'll give you some understanding right about now, and let them logically decide. By the way, as a little secret, higher social status people always speak in a way that has high emotional impact. So this is something you would have to have learned anyways if you wanted to be higher social status. To use emotional impact, you must communicate in a way that triggers emotions. A big mistake most people make is that they try to do this with words. Words are far too logical and can be filtered and analyzed. Instead, you should use body language and voice tone. Body language and voice tone bypass these filters and directly trigger emotion in the subconscious mind. So let me give you a few examples. Most people, when they want to tell someone they're suicidal, say something like this. Yeah, well, um, you know, it's tough, you know? What they're trying to do here is test the waters because they don't just want to come out and say something that's scary like they're suicidal. Now that's okay, I don't blame them for it, but they're also doing something much worse. They're seeking permission and they're trying not to inconvenience the other person or do anything that can make the other person mad. The problem with that is that although all you're really saying is, yeah, hmm, you know, I've had it a little bit tough, what they hear is, hey, I want to say something to you, but if you don't want to hear it, that's okay. Because I'm so afraid of making you angry that you could walk all over me and I won't retaliate at all. So their brain hears this and it makes them feel a little uncomfortable because their brain knows the best thing to do is ignore you and that no bad things will happen to them if they do this. Instead, you want to speak more like, hey, if it's okay, can I be a little open in front of you? Can I you know, tell you about something that's been bothering me and you just sit there and listen? You see, when you say that, they immediately go like, yeah, sure, what is it? How can I help? Because emotionally, you've made it so that they want to understand and be there for you. Another example is confrontation. So let's say, for instance, your friends all went out last night and they said they would call you before going out, but they forgot. And so you spent three hours waiting for them to call you. Well, a lot of people would confront them something like this. Oh, uh, hey, Stanley, uh, yeah, didn't hear from you last night. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, oh, you forgot. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, like, you know, if you just call me next time, it'd be really cool. All right, you will? Oh, thanks. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, again, all you're really saying is, hey, you could forget to call me as much as you want, and I'll never do anything about it. Instead, you want to speak more like, 
Hey, uh, Stanley, you didn't call me. Mm-hmm. Well, understand that when you don't call me, it wastes my time and it makes me less inclined to hang out with you. See, Stanley, or again, me, is going to be a lot more likely to remember this conversation. It invokes that emotion that it's important to respect this bound. In fact, it even goes a little bit deeper. Memory and emotion are very much interconnected, and you remember stuff when there was a lot of emotion, either positive or negative emotions. And in fact, if you want to think back right now, you'll realize all the memories you have that really crystal clear and come to mind is when you had a lot of emotion at that time. Well, when you speak with this emotional impact, Stanley, or again, me, is going to remember the conversation and the next time that he's heading out, he's gonna be like, oh, wait, have to call you. Now, I know you don't wanna threaten anyone. I know that you're a kind and nice person and you just wanna be you know, nice to everyone. But here's the thing, speaking with emotional impact is a natural flow of human conversation. Everybody uses emotional impact to some degree, and everybody makes these tiny threats to some degree. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're just going to be walked all over, nothing is going to change, and you're going to continue to be suicidal. So do what it takes to use emotional impact. I also know that the idea of speaking in such a way causes a lot of fear and anxiety you don't want to risk anyone getting mad. Well, that's okay. It's okay to have fear and anxiety and still do what you need to do anyways. So you just want to push through that fear and anxiety. And if you read my book, Coffee, you'll learn a lot of techniques how. But for now, just know that you should do what it takes to use emotional impact.